What do Roger Deakins, Greg Frazier, and other famous cinematographers all have in common? Sure, they are all world-renowned cinematographers, and yes, they have access to the biggest and best budget when it comes to Hollywood movies. But what I'm actually talking about is the one technique they all use to achieve the best-looking images when it comes to the films they shoot. And this technique is soft, motivated lighting. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can execute on this technique by going over a narrative commercial that we try to achieve the movie-like look. This can be associated with camera movements, set builds, VFX, and so much more. But the main key ingredient is lighting and how cinematographers shape their light. I'm gonna break up this breakdown into different sections and I can guarantee you'll start seeing lighting in a whole different way. The first thing I want to start with is backlighting and establishing a general lighting position as well as contrast. Hollywood cinematographers generally position their lighting behind their subject or just off to the side to establish a strong backlight and contrast in their subject. This is also associated with the term that everybody loves to use which is cinematic lighting. But there are certain feelings associated with films and it's the elevated realness of it all. It doesn't feel necessarily commercial with low contrast ratios across the subject, but it feels more naturalistic and characteristic. Now we're gonna dive into a short narrative commercial that we shot and I'm gonna go over some lighting diagrams as well as my pre-production process as a cinematographer. I'm super excited to go into this breakdown because this was a big commercial for myself in terms of defining myself as a cinematographer and stepping away from the normal commercial pieces that I usually shoot. I shoot a lot of flashy things, but this was my first time that I was really trusted in terms of creating a narrative commercial that is past the one to two minute marks. This is supposed to be very intentional. Scenes are supposed to match. And there's a lot of things that you have to really play in terms of scenes making sense and lighting continuity and everything like that. So this was a lot of work for myself in terms of taking another step in terms of my cinematography journey and i'm really excited to share with you guys a lot of things that i learned in terms of making a narrative piece and making something look more film-like so this is the first scene of the piece that we're going to be looking into there are a bunch of intercuts before this in terms of what the details around of her room and just establishing that she has a really good relationship with her father we like to call the hero shot of the piece this is what everybody was excited about in terms of how everything looked and this is again to make everything feel as natural as possible. This is supposed to be early morning. She likes to sleep with her light in and then the, her dad comes in, turns off her light. It's supposed to show that this connection between the father and daughter, as well as that the dad is on that early morning grind. So this could be very difficult to pull off in terms of having enough level to make sure that it feels like night, as well as placing your sources in the correct manner. So before we even get into the breakdown, I'd like to go over some camera settings as well as exactly what focal length I shot this on. So this was shot on the RE Mini LF. This is a very famous camera in terms of a lot of people were using this on Hollywood sets because of its size, but it's mainly geared towards commercial look. And then the lenses that we shot this on were the Zeiss Supreme Primes. And in this specific scene, I was shooting on an 85 millimeter. So again, a big conversation I had with the directors in terms of how this is supposed to feel. We're supposed to be a fly in the wall and we're supposed to be watching. So everything that I was shooting this on in terms of getting like tights and even these medium shots, which are are supposed to be my like wide establishing shots. We were shooting on like 50 and above. So we had like a 50, an 85, and a 135. We had the full kit just in case that we had to break it up. But again, I was really backed up. And this is what you'll see on a lot of films that we're watching. We don't want to be in there like a commercial, but we want to have that watching feel. This is supposed to feel very early morning. So I changed my camera's white balance to 4400 Kelvin just to push some blue into the shadows. And you'll see in the next shot why I exactly did that. So if we were to draw a top down angle of what we're actually looking at in the room, we have the nightstand here, her bed here, and then myself, I'm sitting about around here with the camera. And then behind me is a window just to give you some guys some context into some of the next shots that we're going to be looking in. So obviously, if this was a realistic room, the bed would be up against the corner, then she would have a lot more room to play there. We'll see that in later scenes. But this is just to get that angle that we're looking for so I could actually backlight my subject. So we have our little lamp there and then we also have another fixture in play. But again, we're going for that watching feel and then slow pans and tilts in terms of making this feel very moving and touching. We don't want anything 
jerky. We don't want anything like that. So I was on a Video 20, which is like a heavy duty tripod and it's easy to move around. It wasn't anything like an O'Connor, but it really got the job done in terms of getting those fluid movements. So the next thing that we can start talking about is lighting and then where I positioned it. So we just have a simple lampshade here. And then my main talent is in this bed here. And then this light is providing the main form of contrast that you can see going on here. So this is a B7C bulb. And then we had this roughly set at like 10% super low. And then we had a lampshade on top of that too. So that was like diffusing it and also shaping the light downwards, but also spilling onto her, giving us these nice highlights and everything into the face that we're looking for. So this is just going into positioning and what a lot of famous cinematographers do in terms of their subjects and where they like to place the light. We're always going to like to backlight it. If I was on the other side, having this interaction happen, it would be super flat because we would be on the light side of the subject. I always try to get on the dark side no matter what. And that would happen due to cheating up the bed and shaping this as well. So we get nice contrast into her shadows. But the problem is if we just had this light and you can see in terms of the levels of highlight as, also, as well as the color that there are some highlights here. And that is basically my ambient tone in the room. So to achieve that, I used my favorite favorite picture of all time, which if you guys are long viewers of the channel, you know, and this is a Nanlite 60B plus a spotlight attachment. So spot, and that is shooting up at the ceiling. So if I made another diagram, not really on the side, but if I showed you that lighting direction, it is here. And this is set to a more cooler tone. And this was set around 6,000 Kelvin. So this is providing my room tone as well as to make sure that it's that midnight feel. If I set my white balance to 4,400 Kelvin, anything that's daylight and everything that's even blue, like 6,000 Kelvin will even feel more blue. A lot of these midnight scenes that I did a lot of research on that you basically have this big soft overhead light that is biased off to the corner as well. So to maintain that actual shadow side and the ambient room tone, not really messing up anything, I had that spotlight bounced up into the corner and into the ceiling of the room. So then it would bounce back here. And this is giving me my ambient tone that you can see on the shadow side of her face. I didn't want going this to completely darkness because it would feel weird and be super contrasty and then would probably crush my blacks. So that's exactly what I did in this scene. So this is the continuation of the scene. I just have the diagrams and everything still here just to show you guys exactly what's happening. And this is me panning the camera left as well as tilting up in terms of the dad's action. Now, if this was more realistic in terms of having no light, this would be completely black and we would have no information. But with any anything cinema it's all about cheating your light and cheating your camera angles in terms of making this more realistic so th that you can see now this bounced light acting as my ambient tone as well as giving some highlight back to his face and lifting up here this was severely pushed back in post and nothing is really clipping here in terms of having no information we still have a little bit of information but it's supposed to feel like this really early morning tone and if we go to the next shot in the sequence the dad says good night turns off the light and then now she's waking up to see what's going on because she hears something outside and it's her dad going for an early morning run. And if we draw out this scene, we've now cheated the bed backwards and then I'm sitting right here with the camera and then she's looking out that window and that window is revealed in a later scene. So now my challenge as a cinematographer is to relight this as it was basically moonlight and uh, early morning, but also doing this in the middle of the day. This was one of the hardest things I've done as a cinematographer and it took a lot of planning because the sun was literally right here blasting through these windows. What I had my gaffer do is black out this window completely and kind of build out a tent that we could use here. So if I even draw the window over here and then kind of blacked it out with that tent and then inside that window and this black tent, I had two Astera Titan tubes and then these were set to that same 6,000 Kelvin that I kind of have going on in my room. And then I just have a layer of diffusion from a six by four fast frame. So this is like an opal. So this would give me like uh, half a stop of diffusion. So something just to spread out the light so it doesn't feel as sourcey. And so basically I had to black that out, basically no light coming in and then relight it with our own fixtures as well as soften it up. And then this is giving you that super soft moonlight feel. And this is going back here. And then to add some contrast back into the image, I had my key grip kind of rotate that in and out to kill the spill that's going on her face. But this gives me nice highlights and super soft in terms of the what we're looking for, as well as gives me that heavy contrast ratio that we're looking for in terms of what films and 
Hollywood movies really look like. And then I had that 60B still with the spotlight mount in play. So I'll kind of drive that a little better in the scene. And this was blasting up into the ceiling, adding a bunch of room tone back into here. And this was set at 6,000 Kelvin as well. And then my white balance of my camera is still sitting around 4,400 Kelvin. Don't ask me why I use that number. That's just what I like to use in terms of setting my white balance. And it is a flexible number that the colorist store who I'm really working with can push that in post. So this is setting around 10%. And these Titan tubes, if I remember right, were sitting around like 50%. Two of them in play there, and then just using another layer of diffusion to soften it up so it didn't look as sourcey. And just to show you what that room looked like, here's exactly another scene from a little montage of seeing the dad and the daughter bond. And you can see that window that was in play before, but now this is another scene and another time of day. So this is supposed to feel like midday, and this is exactly how we achieved this. So so if we did another top down diagram, we have here our bed and then we have our window and then there is another window here that we blacked out because it would be flattening out our talent. I could wrap some light around there, but I didn't really like the look. And then in this room, I have a four by four floppy kind of tented over. And then this is kind of blacking out that corner, making sure no light is bouncing back and into my subject. But outside, what I actually have is a 1200D and this is shining up and through the window. So this is with a Fresnel so that my gaffer can actually spot it as well as flood it. And it really gives me some little, really good control of the light. And then if we were to draw the side of the house at like a kind of profile in terms of where this window is and where the light is relatively sitting, I didn't have my gaffer shine it through. It was like the sun. I actually had him position it down at kind of like an angle. And this is, has the Fresnel on it. And then this is pointing up and this is acting as that big backlight with the going through the shears as well as as the light is hitting up into the ceiling and then adding some lift back into the room as well as hitting the back of the talent and giving me that highlight as you can see here. And this was sitting around 75%. So a lot of light was needed just to achieve this. We had it originally up on higher just so I can, you know, see that sunlight. But I didn't really like that, like I said, because it was too harsh and wasn't really realistic to me in terms of where the sun would be. It wouldn't be blasting through like that exactly. So I wanted to have some hot spots on his back and then especially there, as well as lift his face in terms of what we see in terms of ambient tone, as well as getting some directional light on her without flying in another light on the side. But then again, if we look over here, we can see that we have this bulb on. And then this is just a choice in terms of what I see in movies a lot, even though it's the middle of the day, a lot of cinematographers will have practicals in the scene. And I really like the look of it. It's a really subtle thing, but this is adding a little bit of light. And you can see the difference in terms of the color of light. This is a little warm in terms of seeing that nice homey feel of the light and then having that blue and other textures from the shears as well as the 1200D as well as the daylight. So that's this point. I'm sitting around 5600 Kelvin with my white balance because I want this to feel as naturalistic as possible. We're not going for anything looking we're trying to elevate the natural scene that we have here. And then the lens that I'm working with here is a 50 millimeter, kind of my wide lens when it comes to this watching feel, because I kind of framed my subject between this door frame to even give you that watching effect and then had them directly center framed in that to accentuate the focus exactly what we're looking at. This is a really good feel good moment. And if I was in the room with a wider lens, I feel it wouldn't be as touching and as painting the scene that we're trying to create throughout this whole narrative. And in terms of me taking on this project as a cinematographer, I really wanted to get organized in terms of what scenes were supposed to feel like what. Are we at a climax here? What is the feeling? And then what is the time of day? And how do I make this consistent? I've gone so many times to post with my projects and other people's projects and lighting continuity errors in terms of time of day as well as direction of light can really make or break an edit. And I've been down that road before and I've made those mistakes so many times. So the directors and I really had to get organized and the way that we did that was create multiple boards through Milanote. And I just want to take you through the Milanote in terms of what we broke these scenes, how they're supposed to feel, and all the references that we used to actually build out this narrative. So we did a bunch of location scouts at multiple different homes. And there are a lot of things that we had to consider in terms of bedrooms, where lights were supposed to be located, art 
decking already inside some of these rooms and then how they would feel on specific lengths. And like I said before that we're going for this watching feel as you can see in a lot of the CAD Rage photos that we have the camera that we're working on Aria Alexa Mini LF 50 millimeter. Just those were the kind of photos I asked everybody to take when we went to these locations just to make sure that you know this is exactly how it's supposed to look and feel. And if we go back to the main board that we're looking for, we have the main home location that I want to show you guys in terms of what this actually looked like and the small spaces. So again, we had art come in and deck this out completely, but you can see that window that I blacked out completely and did that re moonlighting setup and then moved out and cheated out the bed as well as some of the different angles and what was included in the actual room that we used. And then the door frame that we used to shoot through and then her perspective of looking out, seeing her dad running. The main thing that that we had were these scenes and divided them up into, okay, this scene is playing out. This is supposed to feel like night. Here's the location. And then here's scene two, early morning, nighttime, early morning, day. And so this is just an example how I stay organized throughout this whole shoot and especially going into it and just having all these conversations with the directors as well as the producer, as well as the art team in terms of making this feel as naturalistic as possible. The last thing that we're gonna be looking at is one of my favorite in terms of the look and feel as well as timing and how really a good plan as well as a good team really plays out in terms of executing projects like this. So we wanted a really sunset feel that the kind of the magical feeling that you get of playing with your parents or anybody outside at your front door while the sun is setting during the summer. This is what we're really going for. But in terms of location and everything, the sun was realistically setting behind us. We did a bunch of location scouts in terms of making this feeling. But as long as I had some information in the sky, I knew I could relight this to make sure it felt like a sunset. And this was very up into timing and then adding our own lights to make it feel like that. If we do a top down in terms of where they're sitting, so we have our main talent and then our secondary talent there. And all this is simply is putting a tube light down on the floor and then aiming it kind of upwards to backlight them. And this is the most key thing when it comes to being a cinematographer is to always backlight your subjects. It's the easiest way to get that cinematic look or to make you get that naturalistic look. As you can see, all these orange highlights that are coming from the tube on the floor in terms of their hands, and then they're wrapping around the edge of the faces, and then you can see the direction of light with it little being a little saucy on the underside of their faces. And again, I always like to achieve that, you know, soft cinematic lighting, and this is my commercial brain kicking in. I'm like, oh, can we diffuse that even a bit more? But the directors were like, oh, we really like the look of that hard lighting because it contrasts nice with the daylight that was coming in that was already spilling on our subject as well. So we have a nice color contrast in terms of what we're looking. We have these daylights that were kind of pushed into blue and then we have the dark parts of their su the subject and then we have this orange tone that is picking through for our fake sunset. And then if you look at this in terms of what we always like to achieve in terms of interest, we have a lot of light and dark parts of this image that we could just dive into. But I'm always looking to create a checkerboard in terms of light and dark, and that is the visuals and that is the fundamentals of contrast. And when it comes to a lot of the narrative commercials I've been shooting recently, it's usually my gaffer or somebody just has a tube light and they're either aiming it up at the ceiling or bouncing it off somewhere or placing it in a low angle or something just to hide it off of camera. And then if we take all the lighting things away and we just talk about pure composition, I'm shooting a frame with inside a frame. So this really paints the picture of what we're supposed to be looking at. Again, everything was really center frame. I didn't really run a lot of things in the thirds unless we we're supposed to be really intentional, but this just paints the direction in terms of leading lines as well as what we're supposed to be focusing on. And I did a lot of this in terms of that watching feel. Again, when we went through these other examples, I shot through a lot of frames and I dirtied up the foreground a bit and then this was all the way back and almost like the kitchen this was on a, like an 85 millimeter lens and this really gives you that compressed looking and watching feel that a lot of movies are known for and famous for if you look at her eye here you can see that catch light which is our tube light that we're always looking for in terms of creating something of interest especially in the eyes but if we just talk about ambient tone the sun was setting around at this point so this was around like 5 30 6 p.m and this was shot during the summer so this is when the sun starts to set and then we get that natural gradient going across the sky, which gives us really soft lighting if we're not directly behind the sun or anything like that. And then you can see that little catch light here, but that is the tube providing the edge and kind of rim light to her face, just getting the high spots of her face. But you can see really the ambient is doing a lot of work here in terms of giving us that soft look and then the Rembrandt lighting that we're always looking for. I had a floppy behind me just to add some, some contrast. This was looking a little too commercial in terms of not having a floppy because it was a 
a little lifted and I want to make it feel as naturalistic as possible. If the sun was setting, you would have a high contrast ratio. And it's again, it's just that tube sitting on the floor. And at this point, I believe I had my kind of gaffer walking in and really position it in terms of dialing in this tight. And this was set around 20%. And it's really interesting in terms of the generation of filmmaking we are like cameras are very sensitive to light and that you don't need a lot of power. It's amazing what we can achieve, especially at the price point. I know that lights are very expensive, but these Nan light Pavo tubes are, you know, some of the more inexpensive things of filmmaking. And when it comes to narrative commercials, especially a piece like this, it all game came down to timing and then just adding a bit more of light and knowing exactly what fixtures to use. I learned a lot in terms of having a lot of fixtures available, but I realized I only need tubes, some practical bulbs and some little MCMs to put in some places, maybe a soft panel light and something to shoot into a room, which is totally achievable by getting a group of friends together and shooting, you know, your first narrative commercial or something like that. I know a lot of the camera and lensing does the work in terms of heavy lifting, but in terms of this shot that we're looking like here, it was literally time of day to get you that soft ambient lighting and then adding another tube or light fixture, anything just to give it that little extra kiss and to even tell our story more. You always have to think of yourself as a cinematographer and a director of photography. Yeah, it's your job to shape your light, but it's also your job to elevate the story. And you really have to align with the director in terms of what the film is and what type of images you're creating. If you guys enjoyed this breakdown and want to see more videos like this, where we break down our commercials and really deep dive into terms of these cinematography breakdowns, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next video.